Hey folks, Scott Walters here. Welcome to another episode of Project Brutus on the Bulletproof Garage. In this episode, we are finally going to reassemble the ZF5 transmission that I took apart several months ago for old Project Brutus here. Our 1987 F350 crew cab long bed diesel dually 4x4 conversion field find project truck. All right. Now, in doing so, we're going to go through the step by step process that you should take when you reassemble your ZF5. All right. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Here in the Bulletproof Garage. All right. Now, time to put the bearing on the input shaft um, it's been in the oven heating up a little bit and the input shaft has been in the freezer so should help it go on a little easier All right, that's on. All right, now we're gonna install the seal on the input shaft. Goes like so. And it's probably easier to do it in the vise, but I'm just gonna do it in my lap. Uh, I've got a can here that's the right size to drive this in. That's done. All right, let's tap on these uh, bearings. Um, they're fresh out of the oven, so they're kind of warm. stick this one back in the oven. All right, time for the next one. All right. That's done. Okay, folks, um, let's drive in some races. So uh, this guy just came out the freezer. Hopefully that'll make it a little bit easier to drive in. Um, and as a reminder, on the extension housing or tail housing, these do not get shims, all right? They just go in directly in, no shim. you could tell but the sound kind of changed there on that last whack um, that's a noise that it makes when it's all the way in but I still like to give it a few more whacks just on general principle oh yeah that's it I'm good all right one more on the extension housing so this guy right here goes next all right same drill here oh man that one's not gonna be big enough. Okay, let me use the old bearing. All right, my biggest driver's not big enough, so I'm gonna go ahead and tap it in with this and finish it off with the race. All right, 
and that's in. Okay folks, um, we are installing the races in the main case now. Okay folks, I can't really get at that with a hammer. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put an impact um, socket and extension on there to give me a little extra length. Okay folks, more progress. I've got both races installed in the main case. However, there are no shims installed, alright? And also, this is not installed behind the race for the main shaft. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and mock everything up and check for the proper preload, all right? We're going to have to figure out the proper thickness of shims that we need to have that preload. <clears throat> all right, folks, working on main shaft reassembly, all right? So you will notice that I've got the main shaft in a vise. Um, I have copper jaws on the vise, so we're not going to harm anything here, right? So. Um, first thing we're going to do is uh, we're working on reverse gear. So we've got the bearing, which we're going to hit with a generous amount of um, transmission fluid. All right, that slides on like so. Um, next goes the gear. So again, we're going to put some ATF here as well on the mating surfaces. All right, and that drops down like so. All right, now, um, next we've got the synchro, uh, the reverse synchro, and again, you guessed it, a generous helping of ATF, and that's going to slide on as well. All right, now, um, your kit is going to have several different synchros. Um, I will tell you um, that you're just going to have to, um, they're generally not marked. You're just going to have to slide them down and see what fits. So this is a nice snug fit. You can see how it fits like that. All right. Rotating, no catches. From here, we've got to get the oven fired up and we've got to heat some parts up. Hey folks, what I have done now is I have tapped on the fifth and reverse synchro body. Now, uh, before you do this, you have to put this in the oven for 15 minutes at 320 degrees. And then it just taps on. Now, there is a shallow side which faces up and a deep side which faces down. And on the shallow side, this area right here, there is a... Um, you know, there's just a very small, maybe an eighth of an inch lip um, between this part of the synchro body and this part of the synchro body right here, okay? Um, on the deep side, that is much more pronounced. So again, shallow side up, deep side down, tap it on after you've heated it up to 320 degrees. You also want to make sure that the tabs on your synchro ring, all right, these guys that are moving around right here, um, line up with the slots on your synchro body. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to tap it all the way down. All right, now it's time to install the snap ring. All right, that's in. All right, folks, time to install the um, synchronizer slider, and that just fits over the synchronizer body, all right? Sits down like so. Now, um, one thing that I do want to tell you, I'm working on an S547 transmission, so this is the later model. On the earlier model, on the S542, they're configured a little differently, and you have some areas where some of the teeth are flattened out and those have to line up with where you're going to put your little detents in your springs okay on the s547 you don't have those so on the s547 you just go ahead and slide it down again on the s542 you've got these three areas where you're going to have your detents in your springs and those have to line up with the flattened areas um, or the areas of the synchronizer um, 
slider that have flattened areas, all right? But on the S547, it just slides in. And we'll hit it with a little ATF. Okay, folks, now we have to install the, uh, the detents and the springs into the synchronizer body. All right, it's easy enough to do. So what you do is you go ahead and put the spring inside the detent, slide the spring into the hole and push it down. Good. All right, next up is the fifth gear synchro ring. All right, now that the synchro ring is on, then we install, this is the two-piece bearing. All right, sits in like so. And then we install fifth gear. All right, next up is your bearing. This one's been cooking at 320 degrees for, uh, 15 minutes, so you're just going to have to tap it on. Let's see if I can get the old race on here. Alright folks, you know, Again, I'm using a copper-faced hammer here, so it's not going to harm anything. So, uh, and obviously, I'm just beating on an old bearing race here. Now, let's see if I can get this off. All right, there it goes. All right, let's get the snap ring installed. All right, that's in. Moving right along. All right, folks, time to flip it over. Start working on the other end. Okay, now we've got the first gear bearing going on. Followed by first gear. All right, and then the synchro ring for first gear. And again, if it doesn't fit down in there nicely, uh, you know, it's you've got the wrong one. Okay, folks, this is the one-two synchronizer body. All right, just like before, you put it in the oven for 15 minutes at 320 degrees, and then you just tap it on, all right? Now, once that's tapped on, you got a large snap ring that holds it in place. All right, and that's that. Next up is your one-two slider. Now, this one's a little different. This one has a tapered end here, and this one is close to being flat, all right? So the tapered end goes down and towards first gear. All right, and you can see the taper fits right down in here. All right, at this point, you can go ahead and install your detents and your springs. And next up, drop in your synchronizer ring. All right, now we go with second gear. So that's a second gear roller bearing. 
and that is second gear right here, installed like so. Okay, folks, fresh from the oven. Next up is the uh, the thrust washer. Whoa. Okay, that slid on down. All right, next up, input bearing spacer. Oh man, that slid on nicely. Uh, again, folks, with the uh, the thrust washer and the input bearing spacer, these were both cooked um, at 15 minutes at 320 degrees. All right, slid on, didn't have to tap it on at all. All right, next up, third gear bearing. And then from there, third gear, installed like so, with a tapered piece facing up. All right, next up is the third gear synchronizer ring. Okay, folks, it's time to put the 3-4 um, synchronizer body on, and it's the same for each one, right? So you bake it at 320 degrees for 15 minutes, and... Then when you put it back on, all right, you see what you got to do here. You line up the tab with the synchronizer on the synchronizer ring with the opening on the synchronizer body, and you just tap it down into place. Whoo, it's hot. Okay, and that's in. All right, and there's a snap ring that goes on to hold that in place. So let's go ahead and get that on. Snap ring right here. Going on there. Sometimes I find that if you tap the shift body in a little bit more, or the synchronize the body in a little bit more, the snap ring will pop in. Oh yeah, it's in. All right, that's that. All right, up next is the 3-4 slider. All right, you know the deal. It's time for the detents and springs. All right, again, detent and spring. All right. Three detents and three springs are in. All right, the detents and springs are in, and then the synchronizer ring is in. All right, next up, input shaft pocket bearing. Again, uh, this one's been cooking. So, 320 degrees, same deal as everything else. Okay, time to install this bearing right here. Now, um, I've got one of these in the freezer right now cooling off, all right, to decrease the outside diameter slightly. And, um, and we're going to increase the inside diameter of this pocket here by using a heat gun. All right, so I've got the inside diameter here. Uh, wow, that's not great. 120 degrees and cooling off. Uh, I was hoping to get it to about 150. Let's hit it with some more. All right, I'm getting about 128 degrees there. That should be enough to make a little bit of a difference. Let me go grab the bearing out of the freezer. All right, dropping it down. And let's see if it taps in easily. All right, if you notice the noise change there, that's where it bottoms out. So that bearing is in. All right. 
Now I'm working in the extension housing. We've got a seal that needs to be tapped out and reinstalled. It does not sit flush on either end. Uh, you'll notice that the solid end um, is towards the back of the extension housing. So the open end or the end with the lip is going to be towards the front. All right. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and measure and see if I can tell how deep it is here. Okay, there's a measurement. It's one-tenth of an inch deep, all right? So it is not flush. It is not above the depth. It is below the depth of the case right there. One-tenth of an inch, all right? Uh, I don't know if this is a critical measurement, but uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can get it pretty close. And let's go ahead and tap it out. This, it, and it goes in this orientation, all right? So this end is up, all right? Seal actually looks like it's in pretty good shape, but we're still going to replace it. All right, I've got the new seal. I just, it ended up just pushing in by hand almost. Let's see if I can tap it in slightly. All right, 0 0.075, I'm close. Alright, there we go. It's 0.12 inches deep. Um, I don't think an extra two hundredths of an inch is going to be a big deal. Alright, so good to go. Alright, working on the main case now. We've got this seal installed. The, uh, the lip is facing down. This has been in the freezer for an hour or so, so I can almost push it in by hand. Let's give it a light tap. All right, that's in. <clears throat> okay, as you can see, I've got the counter shaft and the main shaft ratchet strapped together with the rails. And um, on the bottom of the rails is, I don't know what you call this thing, but uh, this gets them in the correct position. Um, so in theory, I should just be able to slide the extension housing over here and things should be relatively lined up. There. It's because the main shaft was sitting on the bench. All right, I wrestled it together, so everything looks like it's where it's supposed to be. All right, the shift rail retention plate uh, has three screws in it, so we're going to go ahead and put those in now. Okay, next thing we've got to get this uh, shift rail in, so slide down. All right, there we go. All right, now drop the case down. And then go ahead and install some case bolts. Obviously you don't need to install all of them, but you're gonna need enough to hold it together. Now we've got to take some measurements to ensure we have the correct preload. All right, we're going to do this on the main shaft and the counter shaft. We're doing the main shaft first. As you can see, the transmission is facing down with the extension housing up. Um, I have got the transmission mount on the transmission so I can put my magnetic base dial indicator on it. And I've got the dial sitting on the main shaft, okay? Um, and under here I have a pry bar that is on the main shaft. And if you watch the dial on the dial indicator, you can see 
that it moves as I press down on the pry bar, all right? Now, let's get you a close-up so you can see exactly what we're doing. <clears throat> okay, now let's go ahead and zero this out. Okay, now that the dial indicator is zeroed out, I'm going to go ahead and press down on the pry bar. All right, 25 thousandths. It goes all the way around. That's 50 thousandths, 55, 60. All right, so I'm getting 60, right around 62. All right, I'm going to call that 62 thousandths, okay? So 62 thousandths is our first measurement. Okay, now we've got to account for this. This goes behind the bearing race on the main shaft in the main case, all right? So we've got to account for that. All right, 13 thousandths, all right? Okay, so 13,000, so we've got 62,000 here, and then we've got to subtract 13,000, and then we've got to make one more calculation to determine what thickness shim we're going to use. All right, time for a little math. Okay, so we had 62,000 of travel here, right? So out of that 62,000, um, we have to account for the the oil slinger, the oil baffle, all right, so that's 13,000, so 62,000 minus 13,000 is 49,000. And to that, we need to add shims to get to the spec for preload, all right? So you want about two to three thousandths of preload, ideally. Now, the spec from the manual is 0 .00079 or 79 ten thousandths, all the way up to 0 .00434, all right? So again, somewhere in the middle of that is, you know, two to three thousandths, all right? So, um, and so when we do that, so when we take 49 plus two to three thousandths, you know, you get 51 to 52 thousandths, and guess what shim we took out of this? we took a 52,000 shim out. And that's what's going right back in, all right? I've got a shim kit, but I'm gonna use the original shim of 52,000s, and that's going to give me 3,000s of preload, which is right in the middle of the spec. Bam. All right, working on the counter shaft now. I've got my dial indicator holder wedged in here under the drain plug, all right? Um, and I've got it sitting on a magnetic level, all right? So it's a plastic level with a magnetic strip, and that level is sitting on top of a counter shaft gear, all right? So what I've done now is I've got a, a little pry bar under that gear, and I'm just going to lift up, and I am getting, I've done this several times, and I'm getting right at 59 thousandths, 59 and a half thousandths, all right, or thereabouts. All right, so at 59 thousandths to have the correct preload of around 3 thousandths, 2 thousandths to 3 thousandths, all right, we want a shim of 61 to 62 thousandths, all right? And this is the shim that I took out, all right? And what do you know? All right, there you go. 62 thousandths. So we're going to use the old shims, the original shims on the main shaft and the counter shaft. And you know, frankly, that makes me feel a little bit better about this rebuild, knowing that it went back together just how it was before I took it apart and rebuilt it. All right. If these numbers were way off, that would make me a little bit nervous. All right. Time to take it all apart again.
right, that's one out. All right, that's the um, race for the counter shaft in the main case. And there's the shim. The shim is, that's the 62,000 shim. That's the original shim, so it's going right back in. All right. And now just to beat it, I mean, uh, tap it into place. Well, it's been a while since I took this thing apart, so I had to look at the disassembly video to remind myself how I got out the race for the main shaft, all right? And it's this doohickey here, all right? That barely fits behind the race, and it's not as easy as using that fancy three-jaw tool, but it works. And I've already moved it a little bit here. And I'm going to clean off the grease. I just put some grease on here to make sure it wouldn't rust um, while I was waiting to go back together. Um, so now I'm going to toss it in the freezer. Um, you can see there's some shards of stuff that, uh, that came out here. Um, looks like aluminum. So I'm going to make sure this is cleaned up really well. And I'm going to make sure that the actual case is cleaned up really well before I reassemble. All right, going back together for hopefully the last time. Um, the 62,000 shim, the original shim, um, goes back underneath the counter shaft and under the main shaft. First, we've got the 52,000 shim, again, the original one. And then we've got the oil baffle, all right? And it is installed like so, all right? And so the oil baffle goes on top of the shim. The races are in the freezer right now. Um, I, I like to cool things off when I can just to see if I can shrink the outside diameter slightly to make them slightly easier to reinstall, okay? All right, I'm gonna heat up this race uh, pocket right here now, uh, make it easier to install. It should slightly expand it. Yeah, it's actually not getting that hot, but it won't hurt. All right, just got the race out the freezer. Double check, make sure I got my shim in there. Yep, it's just still in there. One of those, some of these. Yeah, it's not going any further. All right, main shaft race. Mm. All right, they're in. Okay, don't forget to reinstall your magnet. It fits in this slot right here. And I'm going to install this one with a little RTV just to keep it in place. All right, everything is moving fine. Seems happy. Uh, next up is reverse gear. Reverse gear sits on here, like so. And then you've got one bearing, two bearings, and I've already lubricated the bearings with some ATF. And then this um, shaft here has two threaded holes, all right? And so it's gonna go in like so. There it goes. And then uh, I've put a little bit of RTV on this bolt, all right, um, because that can potentially leak if you don't have any on it. Uh, and then this bolt goes in right here, and that's what holds the shaft in place. 
Okay, this shift rail just slips in right here. All right, now we've got three shift rail retainer bolts. And, you know, these did not have Loctite on them, but man, I'm going to put some on. I'm just going with the blue Loctite. So, because bad things ha can happen if these come loose. All right, the torque spec on these is um, seven foot pounds, and that's uh, 84 inch pounds, all right? So one foot pound equals 12 inch pounds. So i um, gonna do some public math here. Seven times 12 is 84. It's not a whole lot. All right, got that one. Got that one. And one more. All right, seven foot pounds it is. All right, seal the case. The recommended goo is an anaerobic sealant and I'm using some Loctite 515. All right, case going on. are going in. Okay, I've got all the case bolts in, uh, finger tight. At this point, I'm gonna drive in the dowel pins. Um, so one of the pins, this one here, has to go in from the bottom, and the other can go in from the bottom or the top. Now all the case bolts get torqued to 17 foot-pounds. Okay, reverse idler shaft bolts get torqued to 16 foot-pounds. All right, good to go. Okay, going on next, the side cover right here um, goes on with a gasket. The bolts take a drop or two of Loctite. At least uh, they had Loctite on them when I removed it, so they're going back on with Loctite. get torqued to 28 foot-pounds. All right. 
all done. I'm just going to go around one more, once more to double check. All right, I'll do the same thing with the other side. Okay, next we've got the reverse light switch, and there's a crush washer. This one is aluminum. All right, and that's torqued to 15 foot-pounds. All right, now it's time for the detents. There's three of those. And the springs, and there's actually a spec for the spring that I found in the manual. It said 1.736 inches, uh, <laughs> and they're actually right there. I got 1.735 uh, on this one, so those just slide back in like that. All right, now these guys get tapped in. And there's not really a spec for how far they get tapped in. Um, I'm just gonna get them a little bit past flush and call it good. All right, good to go. I installed the oil seal, this guy here, in the extension housing before I put the gears back in the last time. And that might have been a mistake because it popped out when I was reassembling it. So I'm going to put it back in and I'm going to drive it in with a piece of pipe. And uh, I'm going to put a little permatex number three on it to help it stay in place. Well, that just went down in there. So, I didn't need a beat on it at all. So I'm going to leave it as is. All right, running out of stuff to put back on the transmission. This goes on next. Um, this is the bearing retainer, I believe. And I just put a dab of Loctite on the bolts. Alright, I don't have a torque spec on these, but I'm going to go to 17. Here you go. One, two, and three. Alright, good to go. <clears throat> okay, now for the reverse interlock. This is what prevents you from shifting from fifth gear to reverse. Alright, place a spring on. All right, if it's like so. All right, next step is your shift control housing. Um, put your gasket on there. All right, and this only goes on one way. All right, it goes in this orientation. All right, these get torqued to 16 foot-pounds, so don't crank down on them. Okay, that's done. I'm going to go over it again, just because that's what I do. All 
Okay, good to go. Okay, now we're going to install the shifter just to confirm operation, all right? So these plastic bushings, these are actually the old ones. I'm gonna replace those, um, but just to confirm operation, they just go in one way, all right? So you see how it's oriented right here? All right, it's going to fit like so, all right? So place those on here and here. All right, shifter goes in. Okay, and there are four socket head screws that hold this in place. All right, now for the moment of truth. All right, there we go. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, reverse. All right, good to go. Now I'm gonna take this off because uh, I don't want it getting in the way when I install the transmission. It's a little taller here than the front of the transmission. I'll go ahead and close that off for now. Hey folks, that is it for this episode of Project Brutus on the Bulletproof Garage. But before I sign off, I've got a few things for you. And we're gonna have some bonus footage here in a second, all right? So, first and foremost, Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And post any questions or comments that you have. Even if you think I'm doing something wrong, all right? I'm far from perfect, which my wife will gladly tell you if you ask her. And she'll tell you that even if you don't ask her. <laughs> so again, hit me up with any questions or comments. Next, check out the other videos on the channel, all right? I've got several dozen videos up right now. All right, several dozen. I've got a few dozen videos up right now. Okay, we've got a lot of content on Brutus, okay, including the solid axle swap that I did and documented. Um, there's a lot of content on the 7.3 IDI turbo engine build, all right, including the two junk engines that didn't work out for Brutus. Um, we've got a Borg Warner 1356 transfer case rebuild as well. Um, in addition um, to the content on old Brutus, we've also got some early Bronco content, all right, with more of that to come. And there's even some small block Chevrolet content on the channel, all right? So poke around on the channel a little bit and check it out. Now, stay tuned for some bonus footage. And we'll see you next time on the Bulletproof Garage. <sighs> All right, folks, our bonus footage today is on vintage chainsaws. And I really have a question for y'all, though. I want to know if this is something that you want to see on the channel. I'm talking to you, all right? So post a comment, post a question. Let me know what your thoughts are, because I'm thinking about adding some of this content to the channel. And I'm talking about rebuilding, refreshing, tuning and such, mostly vintage steel and John's Red saws, all right? Um, because it's something that I'm doing anyway, and frankly, that's how I fund a lot of my truck and muscle car projects, you know. Just pluck an old saw off the shelf, I've got a bunch. Clean it up and sell it, and lo and behold, I've got money for an engine or a transmission or whatever I need funds for. Whew, that thing is heavy. <laughs> Anyway, this particular saw, it is a real beast. This is one of my favorites. I've got about a half a dozen of these. This is a steel 075, um, made I think from the late 60s into the 80s, but they're mostly a creature of the 1970s, used commercially. That's a 36 inch bar and it can pull that really well. These things got a lot of torque, all right? And, uh, and it may not look big on camera, but trust me, I'm six foot four and 235 pounds. So um, it may look small in relation to me, but on a normal sized person, um, or even my size, it is one heck of a big saw, all right? So let me know what your thoughts are, and we'll see you next time on the Bulletproof Garage.